parallel paths on parallel planes began in 1979 with people and a dream converging on a small rural community in South Phoenix. A cry for hope, a successful push for a better future for this economically challenged and multicultural community. People within the community and people in the state legislature convinced the Maricopa Community College's chancellor and board to have a college near the South Mountain. So began the migration of people. The school was a magnet attracting people to accomplish a huge mission, a dream for this small college in the Arizona Sonoran Desert. But not everyone was supportive. Lots of people didn't believe that the college would even succeed. The first buildings were temporary and designed so that they could be folded up and moved. It was thought to be a bizarre, crazy idea at best, building a community college in the area noted for crime, poverty, and the disenchanted. What would the future hold for this new college nestled in the shadows of South Mountain. The doors open and community members become our first time college students eager to start their journey towards their dreams. Many students were working poor. Over 75 percent became eligible for financial aid. Otros no hablaban inglés or muy poco inglés. Many were single heads of households. Others were ill-prepared, coming with reading, writing, and math levels ranging from first grade on up. I remember Maria, an older woman who wanted to become a social worker. She had always been there for all the neighborhood children, and now by beginning college, she was showing the children another way out. Students came. Many were first-generation college students. I remember going to homes to recruit students. Hey, South Mountain extended a special invitation to those who would not have considered college. I remember a great-grandmother who had put all her children and children's children through school. She came to South Mountain to learn to read. Jaime, a student who was expected to quit school at the end of eighth grade, convinced his brother to let him graduate from high school. Then his family insisted he get a full-time job and quit this foolishness. He already had more education than anyone else in the family. Jaime was determined to pursue his dream of becoming an engineer. After six years of ESL, developmental, and college-level courses, he is now transferring to engineering at ASU. Faculty and staff struggled and stretched to find new ways to reach and teach their students. One of the first initiatives was a campus-wide standard of behavior and an attendance policy. I remember my first day of class after spending my summer in preparing lesson plans for my first music class. I had to rethink my lesson plans after I realized that a quarter note had no meaning unless you understood fractions. I started drawing pie charts on the board to teach fractions, not a typical part of fundamentals of music. When I first came here, I was teaching Plato's Republic on justice and the harmony of the soul. Two students in the back raised their hands with a look of urgency on their faces. Why weren't we told about this before? Eager faculty and staff pushed themselves to their limits, developing new curriculum and programs using creativity and innovation. Faculty and staff never gave up hope of finding an idea, an approach that could help students to succeed. Success was not measured by mere graduation numbers, but more by the growth and development of each student. The first graduation was held in the South Phoenix Adult Community Center, and we had three graduates, but we honored virtually all students attending with certificates of recognition. 
We did whatever would bring about a new sense of hope and anticipation, of new opportunities to share in a life that had promise and fulfillment. Knowledge for life was our model. The commitment to offer an opportunity to learn, to have a better life, was always on the forefront of the minds of the faculty and staff. For their efforts, the group received awards for innovation, but the greatest reward was the opportunity to work with students and colleagues in a meaningful way. In olden times, those traveling through the valley used the South Mountain and the Rio Salado as navigational points for their journeys. When I look across the valley, I see the South Mountain Community College providing an educational compass for the community. Part of the richness of the South Mountain community has been its diversity. From the Pima, to the Conquistadores, to the early Anglo, Spanish, Mexican, and African American pioneers. They established the core community that still exists today. Underlying the rich diversity and history, there's a stability. Many families have been here for generations. Over the 16 years I've worked here, I have seen the struggle. We've learned the strength of the school has been its flexibility, its people, and its diversity. We have helped shape the community, and the community has also shaped us. Higher education had to support and serve the needs of the community. This small college, a fountain in the desert, created a space for the paths of many to gather that might not have otherwise. This small college with a huge heart continues to offer hope for a better life for all those who find their way to her door.